We'll have the link for you here in just a second. Let's see if we can get that over here for you. We'll put that in the comment section over here. And there we go. Jackpot, how are you doing this evening, my friend? Doing good, doing good after we got that cleared up. Back like we never left. How's everybody doing this evening? <clears throat> uh, rolling along, sir. I've been uh, having some interesting uh, exchanges with folks on the social media front. Everything from people like Caitlin Clark because she's white to uh, the SEC's the best basketball conference ever to just all kinds of just silliness. It's pretty funny. Been enjoying it. It's been good stuff here lately. I said the SEC is the best be, what conference in the best basketball conference this season was the SEC, to which you know I I kind of and they they, they the guy went into this whole spiel about oh it's always the best basketball conference and I'm like what well, you realize that up until the fine folks from Alabama made the Final Four this year the SEC hasn't had a team in the Final Four since like 2019. When you tell them that, they're like, burp, 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 and they just spin their wheels. And, well, a lot of times it's also the body of work in between that. You know, it's kind of what's in between the ears as well. But <laughs> you do have a point. Um, they they didn't play particularly well, and the, the 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 really good teams in the SEC. Number one, they didn't play well in their own tournament, the SEC tournament. That and, is a very valid point. And then um, some tough I – mean, how many of us lost in the first – what was it, the Gamecocks in Kentucky um, were the ones lost in the first round? Um, <laughs> um, Gamecocks, Kentucky, and Auburn, who won the conference title, lost in the first round to Yale. It, was that so, the fr- – yeah, well, yeah, yeah, it was. Um, yeah. Your, your conference else got down, their dicks in got to them. in the second round. round. Except for, I guess, Tennessee and Alabama. Yeah. Well, look, I'll give you this. Alabama and Tennessee were the best teams in the conference. And after that, in my opinion, it was a drop off. If you were, if you were great, you wouldn't have had problems with Oakland or Yale. Yeah. Well, I mean, the Gamecocks did beat uh, <laughs> Tennessee's one of the two best teams in the conference. The Gamecocks did beat them. At their place, so. Uh, Chris says the conference tourney is meaningless. Why waste time and energy there? You know well, what? I mean, th- I mean, if the Vols had won it, would it be meaningless? I, I get, I get where you're coming from, Jackpot. But if I'm Tennessee and I know that I'm going to be a number one or a number two seed, why would I want to send Connect out there, my best player, one of the best players in the country, to tweak an ankle against? fucking Vanderbilt. Why would I do that? I don't know. It's just make it's it's more and more like, you know, nothing nothing is important anymore until you get to these championships. And it's just asinine. I mean, and it bit them, you know, they they could have been they could have possibly been a number one seed had they won the thing. Paul makes a good point here. NC State just won their tourney. Now they're in the final four. How is it pointless? Yeah, but in theory, you're correct. But you know what? That is like one of those diamonds in the rough, man. One of those things that just doesn't happen very often. I am looking forward to that matchup with NC State with that big some bitch they've got against that big some bitch that Purdue has. And the refs have to figure out which way they're going to go with it because I guarantee you the young man from NC State is not going to be pushed around in the paint by that big tall fool from Purdue. It's that not big cool. Sasquatch, that freaking big Sasquatch looking motherfucker. Yeah, that's not gonna happen with with uh with this young man from NC State. It's not. So <clears throat> I just I'm looking well, forward he, to that. You know, he got a free pass after their game on national TV. He's like, we're fucking locked in, or whatever it was he got out there and said, and everybody's on social media <laughs> like Oh, he's just a kid. Oh, he, he he's a competitor. They get fired up. Okay, well, I mean, people got fired up more competitors 10, 5, 10, 20 years ago. Nobody said it. So Can you imagine what, what why does this Bob, make it okay? I think that's just damn ridiculous. It is ridiculous. 
I think it's absolutely ridiculous. I mean, it's okay for some fat idiot like me to come on here and curse um, on my own YouTube channel because, look, I'm not in the national spotlight. You are. Act like it. Well, you're representing the Purdue brand. Yeah. You're representing your coach and the people that played there before you, the Glenn Robinsons, the all, all up and down the line of the great people that played at Purdue, Drew Brees. You're representing them. They all put on that P and they were never out there motherfucking anybody. So there's that. Yep. So anyway, I'm kind of looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to that matchup because I don't think, uh, I think it'll be a tough out for NC state, but it would be fitting if they won that game with, uh, their big man knocks their big man around because there aren't very yeah. many big men out there that can push that guy around. Uh, the kid from NC State, I, I think, could. I really do. He's not going to be pumped in the paint. That's for damn sure. So really looking forward to that. <clears throat> so anyway, uh, anything else you want to get out of the way before we get started with the thing I sent you this evening? Well, yeah, well right now we got the Gamecocks over here on the SEC Network Plus. Uh, getting shut out at home by Georgia Southern, six to nothing. You know, I know these. It's meaningless, right? Everything's meaningless anymore. I know these midweek games are meaningless, but you don't like to see that. You, you really don't. I mean, I, I've seen South Carolina when they won the College World Series lose to Gardner Webb in the midweek. But yeah, the last a, year they won the College World Series, they lost to Francis Marion in a midweek game. Yeah, like, that's true. Now, this is just. This is ridiculous, and this is more more Mark Kingston bullshit. Mm -hmm. Well, you know we we can sit here and ride Kingston all night, but he, I I just think that a lot of times in these midweek games too, it comes down to you're going to run out a freshman pitcher against uh, a lot of times these these uh I don't want to call what do we want to call them jackpot midweek opponents. Let's go with that. Mid major possible Bearcats, they're going to go out there and throw out their soft tossing left hander that your guys are never going to see anybody that throws that slow ever. He's going to go out there and whiff your guys for a little bit, and you're looking up, and it's six nothing in the seventh inning because your freshman walked a couple of guys, had a couple of errors, and you're looking up, you're like, Holy crap, we got to win this game now. Sometimes that happens, it, it just seems to happen a little bit more with Kingston, you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, fuckery, fuckery abounds. Um, <clears throat> whenever he's whenever he's present, and accounted for. So Chris says the NCAA babying a dude who'll be on the Shanghai Sharps by twenty twenty five is wild. You think they want to carry their brand into the NBA? The guy is a two time National Player of the Year. What what the fuck do you want from this kid? He's the best player in college. Who are we talking about? Sasquatch? Yeah, Sasquatch. He's been, he's been, he was player of the year last year, gonna win player of the year again this year. And he just lit your team up for 40 fucking points. Come with your hat in your hand, sir. I, I don't understand why. I mean, you guys should he he beat you straight up. Gotta let that go, man. <clears throat> Gotta let it go. It's not like y'all y'all are used to going to the final four anyway. I mean, come on. Don't, don't get upset by that. Congratulations, by the way, to uh, the Georgia Bulldogs for making their second ever Final Four this past week. Um, however, they got bounced last night in the uh, semifinals by Seton Hall. Uh, yeah. So. But I don't know how the balloons came up behind you, but that was pretty cool. Did you make balloons come up behind you? Because all of a sudden there were balloons that came up behind you. I don't know how that happened. I did not. Um, see, said can said like everybody saw it, right? Or am I just stupid? Congratulations. Say congratulations again. See if it does it again. Congratulations. No, I don't know. What, I, I have no clue what the fuck just happened. Did anybody else see the balloons all over Jackpot or am I just batshit? Are you I, are you doing shrooms over there? And maybe I should do shrooms. I don't know. Look at this this pitching. I don't know if you're watching this game. This manager for um uh, Georgia Southern's coming out. He's got like this, this old cheap 
t-shirt with a hood sewn onto it. Looks like something he bought at Roses with an iron-on decal that just says Eagles um, in our state-of-the-art ballpark. Um, you know, just a, this ragtag-looking bunch. Looked like they just jumped off the prison bus. And they're just mouth pumping our team. It's, that's just absolutely anal get, to me. You get by somebody in a in a in a dress t shirt, basically. It, yeah, it is. I mean, it's looks like something he got off the thrift store. He, jeez. <clears throat> well, there you go. With R, that. R saw the balloons, so I guess maybe you're not high. Hey. So you are Vic Tube are all high together. Yeah, I'm on the shrooms. <clears throat> hey, Jackpot, can we do a show this year where I'll get high as a kite and then you can just ask me questions and whatever the hell comes out, comes out? That might be cool. Oh, that sounds fun. That does sound fun. We could do the Rob is Blitz show. Baked Rob. Yeah, <laughs> that could be funny. All right. Um, <clears throat> I had this, uh, this thing from 247 Sports where they were talking about the biggest games of the upcoming week here or the upcoming in week one mm -hmm. and week one in college football. There are, look, we have the Georgia Clemson game. That is a big game, but there's some really interesting matchups in week one. And I thought we'd go over them just a little bit, a little, little step here or there. <clears throat> and what you think of each matchup and what I think of each matchup. So we'll start with North Carolina for some reason, is going on the road to play at Minnesota. Well, so Minnesota came here last year. Or not came here, came to Chapel Hill. I don't want anybody to think I'm in Chapel Hill. Uh, yeah? They wouldn't let you in Chapel Hill. Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, the early lean says, and this story from Brad Crawford says, North Carolina 26, Minnesota 20. I think Minnesota may win that damn game simply because North Carolina lost a shit ton. I don't think their defense is worth a shit, and I think that Minnesota may come in may come in and win that game. Well, their defense may actually be better than their uh, offense this year. Um, but, yeah, they, they're losing a lot. Um, yeah, uh, What's his name? Uh, quarterback gone. Uh, What's the what's the other guy's name? Um, Tails, Drake. Tails gone. Uh, yeah. Running backs gone. Right, Hampton. <clears throat> I, I mean, and it's it's at Minnesota. I think it was semi close last year. Um, <laughs> yeah, I might would give the edge to UNC just off the uh, the coaching advantage, but don't they still have? Uh, uh, PJ Fleck up there at Minnesota. Yeah, Fleck's up there. Nobody, nobody nabbed him. Yeah, I don't know, man. It seems about, seems like a toss up to me. Next matchup is North Dakota State <clears throat> playing at Colorado. Of course, second season of Neon Dion up there. That North could be real interesting. Um, and and I don't know what North North Dakota State returns or. What they're they didn't win the uh division two or uh FCS national championship last year. I think did Montana win it or did they, or did they win it? South Dakota won it, maybe. Possible Bearcats, I don't know. South Dakota said no, not the possible Bearcats, but the Jackrabbits won. Then the Jackrabbits win. You you I know think. what, you, you could call them the, the 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 South Dakota rapists. I'd be like, all right, he's right. I don't know. It's the, I think the Jackrabbits won against Montana. Anyway, uh, I don't know what North Dakota State's returning um, and so on and so forth, but I think that uh, could be a, a test for Deion Sanders. I don't, so think anybody, open, I don't think anybody would be upset if they lost. Well, the first, the first set of lines came out had Colorado as a seven-point favorite. Um, and this says outside of the COVID season, North Dakota State has posted double-digit wins every year since 2011. So this is a team that's not used to uh, losing football games, Jackpot. Yeah, oh, no, no. They're they're the real deal. All right, one of Jack, I guess this is one of Jackpot's other teams here. This is an interesting matchup. 
Penn State playing West Virginia. Mm-hmm. Penn State is going to Morgantown, land of the burning couches, even though they don't do that anymore. They're going up to uh, to Morgantown to play. You know, Penn State every season, it seems like they start out the season really well, and then once we get to Halloween, they start shitting the bed. Well, they well they're perennially they're always going to be at least a two loss team, but um, yeah, I don't know what I don't know I don't know looked at their schedule this year. I don't know what we're looking at. Um, do they play Michigan and Ohio State? Both Michigan's going to be down a little bit. Ohio State probably be improved. Um, Oregon probably be almost as good, not quite maybe as good as what Michigan was last year. So they're going to have a tough road to hoe. But that's, that's kind of like a must-win game for Penn State, too. Um, James Franklin goes up there and shits the bed against those fuckers. I don't, I don't know, man. I, I don't know. I think there's a section of the fan base that wants them gone. <clears throat> even, even though they're normally a double-digit win team, they're not winning the big ones. Um, Chris Foster's trying to stir up shit saying Don Staley to Tennessee for 3.7 million is the rumor. Why would Don Staley want to leave that juggernaut of a program to go rebuild yeah. Tennessee? That didn't make yeah, they sense. would, ne- they'd never, South Carolina would never let her get gone. They'd pony up whatever they had to. They'd probably, <laughs> they'd probably, they'd take money away from Shane Beamer. Yeah. I mean, cause y'all care more about women's hoops than men's football. or quarters up. Than to keep that well, I mean, they got to. I mean, it's only you know, it's the only um national championship level sport they have right now. Mm-hmm. The next matchup is Miami at Florida. Gators are a five or are, are teetering around five and a half wins at most of the sports books this spring. It says this is the game that if they're gonna win this one, could keep them from um. Uh, you know, going to the no who gives a fuck ball. So I I mean, I think both of these teams are shit, in my opinion. And either one of them losing is uh is a good thing for America. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> and that's who? Miami playing at Florida. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Florida's the early favorite in that game. Well, they're leaning Florida 33, Miami 27. I don't know. I mean, I think Florida might have a tough time with that quarterback for Miami, that Cam Ward they're bringing in. I think he's, you know, I mean, he could probably do some pretty good things for them. But I don't know. I mean, it's at Florida. I don't know who's going to be running the ball for Florida. I guess Montreal Johnson will be taking all the snaps since uh, Trevor Etienne took his – took his suitcase of beer uh, and his uh, running back talents to uh, UGA. So let me give uh let me give Chris an education. Why did Kim Mulkey leave a three-time national champion to go to LSU? She's from because Louisiana. Mulkey, she's from Louisiana. She played at Louisiana tech and she had issues at Baylor with the administration. Stop trying to stir up shit. They're not Don Staley's not going to Tennessee to revive your program. You haven't been shit since Pat Summit passed away. Stop it. You're not going to get Dawn Staley. She's not leaving South Carolina. It's not happening. <clears throat> not happening. Whatever it is Dawn Staley wants, she'll get there. She doesn't want to go up there with all you racist fuckers at Tennessee. You out of your mind? She doesn't want to do that. Yeah, I was thinking about that too. I mean, would she really? Uh, I mean, I don't know. I don't know that would be a real good cultural fit. No, it would be a horrible culture fit. Absolutely horrible. I mean, I don't even know that it's a great culture fit at South Carolina, but it works. It's not. It's not. I mean, it's it's not. Uh, LOL at Revive. Yes, you just fired your coach. Your program is not where it used to be. You don't, okay? Yeah, sir. You don't. You don't. Um, you don't fire the coach. Um. If you're not in need of resurrection. Yeah. The next matchup as we avoid the dummies here. Um, is yeah, there you go, Papa B. 
You haven't been shit since Pat Summit's son impregnated players. Take that and go home with it, sir. <laughs> Good Lord. Some uh, of these the people got one. some dirt I've never heard of. Yeah, that, that's a true story. Uh, FSU versus Georgia Tech in Dublin. They're going to play FSU and Georgia Tech in Dublin. I hope Georgia Tech wins that game because fuck Florida State and their whiny asses. Yeah, I do too, but I don't think. I mean, well, then there again, I mean, they've lost some pieces. I mean, do you think DJ Ukulele is going to be the quarterback Jordan Travis was? I don't. No. Um, they've already issued hard hats to the cheerleaders there so they don't get hurt. Oh, God. That comes with a uniform. You got your, your bloomers, your dress skirt, or whatever the fuck it is you wear, and then your helmet. So if. The uh, the ukulele hits you in the head. You don't get a concussion. He's lost some receivers, too. I mean, I don't know what they've landed out of the portal. Um, I don't know what they've got coming in, but I know Johnny Wilson's gone. Um, Keon Coleman's gone. Uh, that running back, what's his name, Trey Benson, gone. Um, <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, I don't, I mean, I don't, I mean, they're, they've got them. And Clemson with even odds to win the ACC, and I'm just I don't know. Seems like they're going to be kind of young and inexperienced to me. I mean, are we just kind of shoehorning them up there without? Are they just not even really putting a lot of thought into that? Uh, I don't know. We need uh, Ray Bob to come give us an education on who FSU's got. Because it's just so hard. Sometimes I mean, it's not hard to find out this information, but it is. Because you know it's spread all over. You got to go Google everybody. You got to look up everybody's twenty four seven site and go here and look at this, look at that. You know, I love it when the magazines come out. You get it in a concise form. You know? Yeah. Chris says if Cal got fired and they were hiring a new coach, you wouldn't say that new guy was reviving UK basketball. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes, I would. In a way you would. If you fire your coach. Especially after they lose to fucking in in two in what three seasons they've lost to St. Peter's and Oakland in the first round. Kentucky basketball is shit right now, so just stop. You're out of your mind, dude. Just because they've won over twenty games and made the yeah. tournament as a as a single digit seed, that's still not the expectation. The expectation is not to get bounced in the first round by Oakland, so it kind of is reviving. Beth with a fun fact on the night. Maybe Game not Pass- reviving it like what we all like. If if South Carolina basketball needed to get revived, you might say, okay, well, you went 12 and 18 last year, and you know, you, you haven't made the NCAA tournament in seven years, you know, then that that might be, you know, us getting revived, whereas them getting revived at Kentucky is, you know, not winning an NCAA tournament game this year. That makes sense. Higher expectations. Yeah. Beth says the Gamecocks are on their seventh pitcher of the evening. Burp, 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 burp. Well, that's, they're fine. They're just getting some experience. Yeah, they're, they're rolling some of those guys out there. Next matchup, Notre Dame plays at Texas A&M. The early lead has Texas A&M winning that game 27-24. to 24. I'm I, calling, don't know if I'm, I don't know that I'm sold on that. I'm calling bullshit. We'll call bullshit on that right now. <clears throat> so there's that. Uh, and then the final one is Georgia. That's kind of going to be a weird matchup. You got, um, what's that kid's name? Uh, hmm? What's the kid's name? Riley the- Leonard. Yeah. Uh, going up against uh, his former coach at Duke in right. Mike Elko. That's a good point. <clears throat> Isn't it weird that Notre Dame's just going the transfer route on quarterbacks? That's kind of what they've been doing with Hartman, and then they got the kid Riley Leonard. And you know, remember the day when you know they would Notre Dame was was quarter was basically quarterback you, but interesting. We'll see how that one comes out. That might be one of the more interesting matchups now that I think about it. And the final one yeah, is yeah, uh, yeah, really. I mean, it's two two, it's two teams you definitely don't ever see play. Um, so, yeah, that's yeah. true. They're going there. So it's not a neutral site game. I don't like the neutral site game. I did a, I did a video about uh, Texas A&M's schedule um, early 
at one point, and I think they played like three times, maybe. Yeah. And then Georgia Clemson, the final game here, and it talks about can Cade Clubnett be the difference maker and get Dabo Sweeney's team back to respectability as an annual playoff contender? Will Georgia be looking to make a statement after seeing its two-year reign atop the sports end uh, that ended last fall? You know, I think it comes down to when you really step back and look at it, Clemson doesn't have the roster that Georgia has. They don't. So no. if we're going just by that, I mean, I, I think that Georgia's going to win. I think they're going to cover. There's nothing that Clemson has that makes me think, okay, they can go and beat this Georgia team. There's nothing that they have that's, you know, I, I know that Klubnik's the quarterback, but in the end, man, he's he's not Will Proctor, but he's not, you know, Trevor he's, not talk, Lawrence. he's not Trevor Lawrence. He's not uh, any of those guys. He's just an average quarterback. That doesn't make him bad. He's just average. Just the way that it is. And you need a really good quarterback, in my opinion, to beat that Georgia team. And got issues at the skill positions, in my opinion, too. I still think there's questions at running back. I know everybody loves Phil Moffa, but motherfucker gets coughed on. He he coughs up the ball. And Phil Coffa. <laughs> yeah. Well, there you go. There's Jackpot's new name, Phil Coffa. But uh, I don't think they have anybody at wide receiver that you you look at and you're like, wow, this is going to be the next great wide receiver. I just, I just don't, I'm not buying it. There's been good stuff about the young man coming in uh, as a freshman, but he's going to be a freshman, yeah. you know? So I don't know. I, I think if Clemson wins that game, I think it'll be, you know, they went in there and the defense turned Georgia over. But I expect Georgia to cover whatever the spread ends up being. I really, really one do. of those Clemson idiots over on Twitter has his had all of their position groups ranked uh, going into the spring here or during spring has them ranked, and he had the wide receiver position group as the number three ranked position group on the team. Fuck out of here! Well, based on what? I mean, they don't. I mean. Yeah, I don't. I mean, you haven't added. I mean, I, I mean, you you might have added a couple of pieces, I guess, from your twenty twenty four recruiting class. Um, you you <laughs> lost the one kid to the portal, um, Bo Collins, right? He was decent, um, not a superstar, and yeah. then everybody else is just. I, I thought, and, and Antonio is Antonio Williams still there? Or did he he transfer? Oh, uh, man, I think he transferred to. I'm checking that out right now. Let's see here. Clemson. I thought that was a rumor he was, but maybe he didn't. I don't know. four. Let's see if we can find here. So, with that, let's see what we got here. According to the. the uh -uh. What are you? Where did you get that from? What? Where did you. Uh, off the table, you've got to stay off that kitchen table. This pug is there. This pug just walked into the studio with this in her mouth. You gotta feed that dog. I've been feeding this dog. All she wants to do is eat. You can't have ramen noodles, baby. And you gotta stop getting stuff off that table. So I got speaking of dogs, my daughter walked out the house the other day, and this dog walked up to her. His face is all mangled and everything, uh, like a like a bulldog basically. And mm -hmm. uh, she's like, well, "We have to help this dog." Well, this dog was actually somebody's dog that they fought. So it's like we've kind of adopted this dog. We're working with like some rescue missions to get this dog a uh, a home, but like we've kept him away from our dogs because. We know that he's a fighting dog. You could see it. We took him to the vet, and the vet's like, yeah, this is a fighting dog. His tail was broken at one point. Uh, scratches and shit all over his face, all over his body. You mm. feel bad for him, but on the other hand, it's like he wants to kill my dogs, which is another problem. But if you fight dogs, just to put this out there, you're a cunt. 
I just want to put that out there because this dog has been, he's a sweet dog to people, but to other dogs, when he sees them, he wants to kill them. And that's is because it a pit bull type dog, pit bull type dog. And yeah. uh, the, so this dog has been ruined by whoever decided to fight him and then dump him in our neighborhood. And he walks up to my daughter and we have to take care of him. So if you fight dogs, you're a cunt and I hope you die in a fire. I mean that with every yeah. ounce of my soul. Yeah, it's, it's kind of ridiculous. Yeah, why are you going to fight a dog? What the fuck is wrong with you? Someone told me it was like part of culture. Fuck your culture. Um, fuck too. Yeah, well, the culture's, culture's <laughs> fucked up. Um, and they probably did back in the, you know, back in them Roman times or something, but then dogs weren't domesticated. Yeah. You know, so it's, I mean, that would be like, you know, fighting two wolves or something back then I, I, or today. I don't, I don't know. Um, <clears throat> Mr. Uh, Outlaw says he saw a YouTube short yesterday. Never knew the Braves played a 19 inning game back in 1985. Yeah. It was, was on July the 4th, too, I believe. It was July 4th, and it was the pitcher got the home run. That was the uh, what Rick Camp. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the relief pitcher. <laughs> yeah, how does that happen? The, the relief he he had this this old scraggly beard. I, I've seen uh, I've seen the same thing. It's time by I think I, uh, a little short video of that, and he had a his helmet didn't even hardly fit him. And they were losing, I guess, in the bottom of like the 16th or something. And this fucker hits a damn. It's the first, his first major league hit, I think. Yeah. I think I mean, it was. When does a relief pitcher ever get up to bat? Um, yeah. And he goes deep with it. Nuts. Of course, whoever was, whoever it was that was throwing that, throwing in the ball probably didn't pitch very often either. So, yeah. What a mess. Anyway, um, there's the link if you want to join the show. Who's got the most to lose in week one? Uh, you know, it could be there. There are some some folks that are writing that 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 Georgia Clemson game is a knockout game for the 12 team playoff. Uh, you know, I don't necessarily know. I think if it's a good close game and you know that team finishes undefeated and the other team goes 11 and one. They both could be in the playoffs. They could have well, a rematch. That's silly because if Clemson wins the ACC, they're going to go anyway. Yeah, that's true. It doesn't too. matter if they lose to Georgia 65 to zero, like Do you Florida have a State did. With the automatic bursts given to the uh, to the Power Five teams, I kind of do. More and more, what I think. That? I do. do you have Do you have issues with that? That they get an automatic berth for, you know, for a, a, the playoff? Is that Is that something you've thought about? It's like, eh. I don't know. No, I mean, I, I think it's fair. Uh, if, if you've expanded it to 12 teams, I think it's fair. Because, I mean, you, you know, you had conference champs like from the Pac-12 and stuff that didn't get in in the past. Yeah. Um, so, you know, to make sure that Alabama did or whatever. So, yeah. I think it's probably fair. I, I just – the more and more well, I there's only at... four. There's only four of them now anyway, so. Yeah. But I don't know if I want like a – if you have a season where a four loss team wins their damn conference and then kind of it could take it away a bid from somebody else, in my opinion, but eh. some things you just have to give up, I guess. Yeah. Uh, Big Barney Ross says week two will determine Kentucky and South Carolina's season. Well, let's get, yeah. Week two yeah, is that the was another, that was a, well, actually, that was a, uh, another article I saw today. It had all the games at each SEC team and, and which game would determine each team's season. Yeah. So. Well, if South Carolina wins against Kentucky, you know, I, they, they could they could get to that six-win mark. I mean, that Kentucky game is that hinge point, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It is. I don't, I don't like the fact that I don't like the fact that it's on the road. Um, it's against the team you beat last year. As an well, an underdog. I don't. Or was that game? It's like a pick on my thing. I'm not sure. Um, but I mean, I don't know, man. I just don't know. I'd have to in that game. I mean, you know, you're talking Lenore Sellers probably start get second career start. 
So, I mean, I'd have to give Kentucky the edge at wide receiver, too, um, because they return those wide receivers. They got some big wide receivers. South Carolina's got a bunch of wide receivers they brought in out of the portal. They're all small guys. And I saw a thing today, J.C. Sherbet over on 24-7 Sports, our buddy was talking with Chris Phillips of SEC Unfiltered, formerly of the Spurs Up Show. And um, J.C. was talking about the Gamecocks and the transfer portal. So the Spurs Up Show is gone? Yeah, the Spurs Up Show is gone. You didn't know that? Well, I never watched it anyway because, you know, it's fucking stupid. But... I, yeah, I mean, no, I, he he rebranded he rebranded the channel. It's SEC unfiltered now. He covers all the teams. <laughs> Sometimes he shits on the Gamecocks too, which uh, is uh, is crazy. Mm. Chris well, Foster he- says, "I don't like losing. I'm a competitor." Juice Wells on why transfer from South Carolina to Ole Miss. Okay, well, South Carolina went eight and five in the one season where he actually played. So, I mean, he's kind of been tripping over his tampon string for the past. Not, not sure if you're full of shit or he's full of shit, but somebody's full of shit. Maybe he should have been a little more grateful to South Carolina that Justin Stepp saw enough in him to bring him to the program, and they actually gave him an opportunity to shine because nobody else fucking offered him. Uh, it wasn't like Ole Miss was looking at him when he was at wherever. He should have rephrased it. I like stealing NIL money. I'm a cunt. Later. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he did. He stole. He stole. He lied to the coaching staff. He's a piece of shit. Yeah. I wish nothing. I, I wish no success for that guy. None. You don't want him to be injured or whatever. You just want him to. Uh... I don't want him to be injured. I hope. I just hope he just sucks. So. Sucks, yeah. Has has a case of the dropsies, and fuck his dad too. Speaking oh, of being injured, though, I'm gonna tell you that whole foot thing or whatever. I guarantee you, he's not gonna be the same player that he was. Mm. I'm just just putting that out there. I'm not saying I I hope he's not the same player he was. I hope he just doesn't play. I hope he just sucks. He drops everything. Yeah, well, what what, what about I, his dad? Yeah, was his dad was a dickhead on Twitter writing all this stuff? Well, he's going here and he's going there. My son, this and my son, that. Well, fuck you and your son. DP so. says SEC needs to kick South Carolina out of the league to make room for us. You know, a team that wins championships. Oh, they don't have to kick South Carolina out of the league to make room for you, but they're not going to add you because you don't offer anything to you don't offer anything to the conference. South Carolina's already got it. the South Carolina TV market. Market blah, 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 is already um, sewn up with South Carolina. So I mean, it's and it's like and it's not hate. No, FSU doesn't offer anything. I mean, so under under that logic, the fucking hillbillies that you've got watching compared to Clemson being a national brand. Okay, we've got the hillbillies in Lamar. That's doesn't what we, matter. Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. People what? People tune in to watch the game because it would make more sense to to add North Carolina and Virginia to get those TV markets than it would to add Clemson or Florida State. That, that is such bullshit, Jackpot. Well, you've already got you've already got the Florida TV market sewn up, and you've already got the South Carolina TV market sewn up. It's not about it's about money that the football programs can draw and eyes that the football programs can draw. Nobody you don't think that you don't think that Virginia money. TV market drawing in viewers for that UVA versus North Carolina game is. I mean, that's enticing. No, it's not. Shut up, man. You're killing me tonight. I, I want to agree with you, but then we both would be wrong. <laughs> Look, Clemson can bring up, they'll bring a lot to whatever conference that they go to. Let's just leave it at that. Chris says, yeah. finally, Chris says something I do agree with. Ole Miss ain't going to be shit compared to what they're predicting. And, I mean, the only thing, only thing that they've got going for them is their schedule is weak as damn water. In fairness, besides, Chris, besides Chris, Mizzou, they probably have the easiest schedule. They do play Georgia. Yeah. Right. Uh, but <clears throat> other than that, I mean, at home, they got Georgia at home. But other than that, I mean, the schedule is pretty manageable. Their out of conference schedule is a joke. 
I, I think that it's you can't take Chris seriously on that because he hates Lane Kiffin. Kiffin's a better coach than Heupel, and he just he can't deal with it, and it just it hurts his soul. So, you know, there's that. I think that it's kind of hard to value his opinion on that. I mean, I think they could win ten games, but I mean, <laughs> other than that, I mean, other than that, I don't know. I don't know if they win ten games. I mean, I don't, I don't know that they put them in the playoffs. I mean, I just just don't know. There's too many unknowns. They would have to. I mean, they'd have to beat LSU. I think they'd have to beat LSU and and and, and everybody else, and maybe lose to Georgia. And go eleven and one. Who do they? Do they play Oklahoma or do they play Texas? I'm pretty sure it's Oklahoma. Look at Oklahoma. I gotta look at it. I think they got Oklahoma. Uh, there's the lot, the number for, or the link if you want to join the show. Um, what else did I have this evening? I can't remember. Oh, have you been following the women's final, the women's stuff, Jack Potter? Or have you been – numbers yeah. for them were stupid. Did you um, watch Caitlin yeah, those, Clark? Yeah, those, those numbers were dumb. That was the most watched women's basketball game ever. Yeah. yeah um, but- which is crazy for a, for a fucking Monday night, too. I mean, yeah. yeah I mean, it's – and I didn't, I didn't get to watch it personally. I was working. But yeah. – um, it it looked like it was it was a really good game there for about three quarters and then I uh, kind of pulled away from them. Um, I think the matchup that that everyone wants to see is 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 um, is Iowa and South Carolina, you know, because they had the matchup last year and Iowa got the best of Don Staley last year and her team. But can they go out? They're there? wanting to see, but I don't know if they can. I don't know. I mean, I think. I think I think Iowa could beat UConn, but it seems like yeah. You know, I was watching a highlight tape, a hot or highlight tape, a highlight reel from that game. Yeah, I was watching it late Monday night, and I was watching something on YouTube. It was a twelve-minute condensed version of that game, and it was basically like every every important bucket in the game strung together. And I noticed that they kept show every time someone other than Caitlin Clark scored for. Uh, Iowa. They made sure they showed it to make it look like you know this is you know that the, they they distribute the ball around and blah 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 and you know everybody else says they got a bunch of good players on this team. Uh, no, I mean that's a that's a one woman band. So um, yeah, someone a, I was listening to some podcast the other day and they were talking about um, all those other uh, all those other girls for Iowa are all cookie cutter man. It's Caitlin Clark and the Clarkettes pretty much what it boils down to can you yeah, set a I think I think I think UConn's a little bit more of a, a complete team what's that that girl's name Paige um or whatever I think it's Booker yeah pay she's a good player uh, she's been hurt some <coughs> I think which just kind of slowing her down I don't, yeah I um, um well, and and oh, you know, Gino. I, I think it'll probably end up being. It, it, I, I think it's the Gamecocks and UConn. I think they probably beat Iowa. Uh, it'd be interesting to see that. Uh, bu- yeah, Bugers. That thank you, Gamecock Chuck. Um, the other thing too. You, let's do our final four picks here. You got, uh, you got NC State. Okay, and- yeah, Clark is Caitlin Clark's nasty. I mean, just. I mean, I mean, you can't do. I mean, this girl, the girl can hit from anywhere. Yeah. Um, yeah. You, you just can't defend that. And somebody is like arguing. I, I've seen really arguments. Is she the best women's basketball player of all time? I mean, pro- I probably I don't remember seeing anybody else that can do that. Well, and I, I think that people ran their mouths about too about uh, all how these fools up. weren't. Nobody was even watching women's basketball up until just a few years ago. So it, these these Twitter geniuses need to stop with the damn nonsense. I mean, they never watched any of this shit before. So they don't even really have the knowledge to comment on the subject. Well, I think Gamecock Chuck and I can talk X's and O's for a minute. He might agree with me on this. Mulkey made a mistake, in my opinion, with Caitlin Clark. When you have somebody that's as dangerous of a shooter as she is, you don't, you don't, you go, I, uh, 
you don't go under the screen ever. You're always going on top of the screen. And it was like she had coached these people. Hey, we're going to go behind the screen. And that's giving her the space to shoot. You got to stick with her like glue, man. It's not that hard. She made a mistake with that. And she had Haley Van Lithgardner, who is like, who apparently got an IV before the game and was sick anyway. And she still sent her out there, who's slower than her other guards. <clears throat> hey, go guard. So, with so she had an IV and she was able to play? Yeah. She was supposedly she sick was enough sick. she needed an IV before the game. Yeah, and why couldn't Thornwell have gotten an IV? Well, I mean, Thornwell, no, Thornwell had a yeast infection. That's what was his problem. Oh, shit. Um, but, uh, <laughs> but no, I mean, they, they should have played above the screen instead of under it. I mean, it's a very simple thing. Make it really, really hard on her there. And there you go. It's, it's, it's a mess when it comes to that. And I blame Mulkey for that because she should, even if they did it the first or two or three series, no, God damn it. Get your ass out there on her. Don't, when the screen comes, call out the picks and move in front of the screen. Stick with her, period. And if she goes left, she's shooting the ball. If she goes right, she's driving to the lane. You watch her game, she can do all of that. It's, it's fucking crazy. And I don't understand why, uh, why that doesn't, compute. I just don't get it. Um, so. And then Angel Reese after the game, I, I know she was uh, she was whining and crying. Um, I read about that on the USA Today article. So there's a big long thing there where she was whining and crying about you know all the hatefulness and hate speech and whatever. <laughs> I mean, you're going to get on here and whine about this because you fucking lost. I mean, you were talking shit after you won. She talked shit after they won their game against UCLA. Oh, what was that, Saturday, I guess? She told the UCLA assistant coach, like, watch your mouth or something, like when they were shaking hands. This is a grown-ass woman you're talking to like this. This is a coach. Yeah, I, I have issues I, with that. Um, I, I It's like if you're going to run your mouth, then you got to pay the price. We yeah, you're going to run your mouth. Don't get on here and, and cry like a baby uh, after you get your ass handed to you. Oh, but now, here's the other thing, too, is that Reese is a walking double-double. She's a hell of a player, too. You know, and she goes out there and plays her ass off every damn game. You can't dispute that. But they just they just didn't have enough, and they made a coaching mistake, in my opinion. Flat-out coaching mistake. Uh, You, you got to go above the screen, so... <clears throat> so anyway, Devin says Reese could use a few months in a Russian prison. That's not nice, sir. That's not nice. No, God. Uh, anyway. All right. So give you the link here. If you want to join the program, let's put it over here. Uh, we'll take some folks in before we get out of here. I'm rubbing my eyes kind of hard, man. It's uh, these pollen and allergies. Jeez. It's awful up here. Yeah, these trees got to stop fornicating, man. It's making making life hard. So, yeah, I know. I wish they quit being so damn horny. Yeah, get it over with. It's it's <laughs> rough every year in Mar March and April. That's it's hell for me. Uh, anyway, so let's get our final four picks. I, you know, I, I think um, I like NC State to win over Purdue because I don't think they've had a big man that can match that Sasquatch. And uh, I think if uh, I think they can beat them, so I'm gonna take NC State in that matchup, Jackpot. Which way are you going? Uh, I mean, I think Purdue probably wins. I, I just I think NC State's these Cinderellas that stuff usually runs out. <clears throat> this kind of reminds me of the Gamecocks a few years ago. I just, I just don't think they I don't think they got what it takes to match up. But it's been a good run. Matt says, if I pick Purdue in any game, no. Uh, I think I had Purdue losing early, so there's that. The other matchup is what, Alabama and UConn? I think UConn wins by double digits. Matthew Goldsmith says, do you hate Purdue or something? 
No, it's not. I don't hate Purdue. They just they've they shit on you every year in the tournament. They lost what in the second round last season. I, I'm just not buying that at all, brother. Till they yeah, can actually- I mean this year. I mean they finally um, finally woke up. <clears throat> what a mess. Um. So anyway, are you who are you you taking UConn? Are you going with uh, the Bamas? Well, I, if UConn can get there, they seem uh, they're they're. Yeah, you know, it's all over the news tonight that they're playing. Uh, haven't been able to leave uh, for Phoenix yet. Something about I don't know if they've got bad weather in Connecticut or something. I don't know. It must just be them because I mean, uh, uh, everybody else would be delayed if there was a problem in Phoenix. So must be a problem getting out of uh, out of Connecticut for these folks. Life is gonna better. I mean, the, the game's not till Saturday. I mean. You know, I mean, I don't think I'd want to get in the fucking in summertime. Fuck the wintertime. That'd be funny if that'd be funny though if they couldn't get get out of there and that that caused them to end up losing that game to Alabama. That would be uh, they drop that game, but I don't know. I I just think you know it took Alabama a while to get heated up the other night against Clemson. I don't think they played particularly well in the first half. So um, you gotta play a complete game. I think Connecticut probably wins that game. I think that one's fairly, fairly easily. Maybe, maybe a little bit of problems, but not much. Mm. Mm, Gamecock Chuck says mechanical issue, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. I didn't think it was snow because I didn't think they had snow or anything up there right now. I mean, I know it snows in Connecticut a lot, but they have more than one. That everybody was relatively snow free by this time of the year. I don't know. We'll have to see about that. But um, anyway, the other thing, someone sent me a text about uh, wrestling. I know we're both watching WrestleMania this weekend. Which match are you hyped up the most about there, Jackpot? Well, we got to see if Cody can finish his story, right? Yeah. Well, as The Rock said, fuck his story. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, what's up with that? I mean, The Rock's up here. I mean, he's, he's cursing and... And whipping this guy with a belt, and I mean, it's really, it's crazy. I mean, but like, here's the thing. I mean, everybody's gonna be, whatever he does or whatever he has to do it with in that match. Everybody's gonna be, everybody's gonna be cheering for the Rock. I mean, as far as mainstream people, you know, people that don't follow wrestling that aren't 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 marks or whatever. I mean, nobody gives a fuck about Cody Rhodes. <laughs> They're gonna be cheer for the Rock. Yeah, it, but it's I, I like the rocks. I like the rock better when he is a heel anyway. But uh, <clears throat> I'm, I mean, I'm looking forward to that. And the whole I, I kind of it kind of bugs me that you've got you eaten up two nights with basically the same people. You know, it's almost like there's too much Cody Rhodes, too much Roman Reigns. Yeah, there's too much, too much. Who, there's too much just outside stuff. Like these outside interviews, just too much, too much gaga, too much ha ha. Yeah. Um, you know, but um, yeah. Uh, I mean, who we got on the uh, on the women's side? You think old um, think old Rhea Ripley can uh, think she'll beat Becky Lynch, the man? I, you know, Rhea Ripley was a guest on the rundown with me, and she was very charming. Um, really? Yeah, I had Rhea Ripley on the rundown with me. She was very charming, and she, she gave you the stink face. Did you? She no. She she, did. did you see her give that uh, that girl the stink face? Uh, yeah, that, that was. That, crazy. I remember that. that. Is that a house show? She got a girl a stink face. What's her name? Nia Jax or something? Yeah, Nia Jax. Uh, Big Barney Ross says Cody Rhodes made one mistake. Now his pharmacist has to add by mouth to all of his prescription labels. Damn it, Big Barney Ross. <clears throat> so, anyway, looking forward to WrestleMania on Saturday and Sunday. Thomas says she has nipple rings. Well, very good for her. Who? R- uh, Rhea Ripley. I don't know. I mean, I don't know. Uh, well, that's not surprising. I mean, I, yeah. I mean, I'm. Whatever, do your thing, Rhea Ripley. Seems kind of freaky. <laughs> I think she's what? She's twenty-three years old. No, she's older than that. 
Uh, she's not much older than that, brother. She's a young. Probably not not much. What? Who? Who? Who is Who is Dominate Wrestling? Oh God! I, oh, damn it, Jackpot! You're right. She's 27. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Who is Dominic Mysterio wrestling? Dominic Mysterio. Uh, Last year he wrestled Ray. Yeah, they're going. Let's see here. Let's just pull up the whole card here because it doesn't tell me here. He's got a. It was good when he wrestled him last year, and he came in like he was fucking coming from jail. Shut up. Oh yeah. <laughs> Some funny shit. All right, so here's the card. Um, so you got in night one, you've got the Women's World Championship, Ripley and Becky Lynch, the Rock and Reigns of Cody and Seth, Intercontinental Championship, Gunther versus Sami Zayn, Jay Uso versus Jimmy Uso, six pack ladder match for the tag team titles with a lot of fucking teams that I don't. I mean, the New Day, the New Catch Republic, A Town Down Under, Awesome Truth, DIY, and Judgment Day. Bianca Belair, Naomi, and Jade Cargill, which, by the way, Jade Cargill looks like somebody carved her out of rock, uh, versus Damage Control, which is Dakota Kai, As Asuka, and Kari Sane. Mm hmm. Rey Mysterio and Dragon Lee versus Santos Escobar and Dominic Mysterio. Okay. So he's so, all so right. He his dad again in a tag team match. Night two has Reigns versus Rhodes, Rollins versus McIntyre, EO Sky versus Bailey, uh, Logan Paul versus Randy Orton versus Kevin Owens, LA Knight versus AJ Styles. And Bobby Lashley and the Street Profits against the Final Testament, Karrion Cross and the Authors of Pain. The, Matthew the, says, I'm in my 20s, but I remember the tiny Dominic with Eddie. Yeah, that was crazy. I think it's funny when uh, they were asking him some questions the other day, and he goes, uh, uh, can you talk a little bit about your dad? And he goes, well, you know, my dad died. And he said that, like, and without oh, – <laughs> I mean, really funny. I mean, just the way he just, you know, went straight to, well, my dad passed away. We sure do miss him. And I'm like, this motherfucker here. <laughs> Shit made me laugh really hard. <clears throat> All right. Final two things. Did Davion Clowney sign with the Panthers? Big deal or not, Jack Buck? Um, that remains to be seen. I mean, can he, I mean... He had a good season. Has he through. ever lived up to the hype in the NFL? No. No. But, I, I mean, mean I, to be fair, like, they were talking about him like he was the absolute best thing ever. So, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I mean, he's – I mean, he's and is, he too, is he too old now to, to make a push for that? I mean, I got to say, yeah. Well, he's got he signed a two year deal with the Panthers. Well, and my my thing with that is that they're fucking horrendous. Yeah, they, I mean he he signed on to play with a losing team, so you know it's not like he's trying to just go and chase rings like LeBron James or whatever. He he really is trying to you know I, I I mean I guess he's trying to get that paycheck and be be close to the house so he can take care of Jelly Beans Vape Shop on the weekends. I don't know. What are you laughing at? I'm telling the truth. Chili bean, not jelly bean. Oh, oh yeah, chili bean. My bad. You're still, you're still thinking about Easter. You got All your right. Easter basket on your mind. Calm like, down. It'll still be there when the show's I over. Well, I like the uh, I like the Easter basket, but hey, I mean, he's got to go take care of Chili Bean's vape shop. Why not? Have you confirmed his chili, is, is the vape shop in Rock Hill? I don't know where it is. We should find out and take a field trip. That should be that should be uh some Rockabelly 864 stuff. Go there and you'll do your first uh I bought my my glass pipe at Chili Beans Vape Shop. <laughs> Jack Pop going in there and buying a buying a glass pipe, walking out with it. Doesn't realize he bought the glass pipe that looks like a giant penis. 
<laughs> one with a pump on it. God damn it. <laughs> well, I'm sure his dad, his dad's probably a big dude. I mean, he's got to be. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, Joe, Joe, uh, legit leg kick says this. It is a big deal. The Panthers are good now, Tubbies. Yeah, that's all. It, that's all it took. The the Panthers are like predicting. not having. You know, they have no quarterback. They ain't on no receivers or running back, but that or offensive or defensive line. But by God, you got Clowney. So with that though, I mean. Yeah, the, the Panthers are going to be the shits, by the way. The absolute shits. Well, they were the absolute shits last year. It's time to start start leveling up somehow. Well, I mean, they got to – I think the, the word is out. Their quarterback is not, you know – I mean, the guy's 5'7". I'm, I, I'm not the tallest individual either, but I'm not out there trying to play quarterback among the land of the Giants. You're not doing yeah. research. You're not. So I get tired of people saying that shit too about small quarterbacks can make it. Look at Drew Brees. He plays. Shut up. It's one quarterback out of fucking forever. <clears throat> yeah. Brandon says, you think the Jets can go to the playoffs? Well, they got Mike Williams, so they might. Absolutely. I think they're a dark horse wild card contender for real. Well, their defense is going to be good. And I think if Aaron Rodgers doesn't go out there and you know, twist his tampon string. He should. They should be all right. Yeah, I think he'll be all right. Yeah, definitely. Uh, <laughs> that'll do something. All right. Well, there you go. Um, it's been a good show, Jackpot. You got anything else you want to go with? Are they, what's the score on the game, Cox game? It's eight nothing. They lost. It's over. Damn it. <clears throat> Is that the it says Georgia have- Southern first win versus South Carolina since 2009. Then it says tonight was the first meeting since 2011. Yeah, does that really make it that special? Then I mean, it's not like they play every year. Um, but yeah, that's a big win for them. <clears throat> yeah. That's a shitty loss for real. I don't. I don't care if it is a midweek game. That that that's the, just that they got a bunch of they got a cunt, bunch of cunts down there running that operation. Would you be upset if they fired Kingston and hired Monty Lee? No, I mean I can't. I mean he can't be any worse. Yeah, could not be any worse. Jesus, see how that works out. I mean that's that's a terrible loss when you think about it. Yeah, f- yeah. held the four <laughs> hits. I mean what? I mean George, George Southern only had seven hits. They had three more hits than us. But yet, yet I don't know. Baseball is kind of a weird game sometimes. Eight nothing. We were talking about UConn, uh, and this this just came across my Twitter feed here about three hours ago. They do not have a plane to fly to Arizona at the moment. Dan Hurley tells at CBS Sports, you're supposed to take off at six. Mechanical issues with the plane coming in from Kansas City for significant delays. Uh, NCAA handles all trace for NCAA tournament or all travel for the NCAA tournament. The issue among many, issue for UConn among many, is crew flying from Kansas City would be over their FAA hours and can't fly UConn immediately to Arizona. The earliest option is to get a smaller plane via Cincinnati that won't take off until like 1 o'clock in the morning and not land until nearly 5 a.m. The plane from Cincinnati will require a fuel stop because it's smaller. The Husky are going to get to Arizona with hours to spare before Thursday's media availability. What this seems is, this seems like a lot of much ado about nothing. Well, they'll have to adjust to the timing, but I mean they can't. I, this is 2024. We can't get the Final Four teams to fucking Arizona. What the hell's going on here? Oh, they're going to have to. What? What if the coach just said fucking? <laughs> And they, had, and they pulled up with like three station wagons, just load the team up and drive to <laughs> drive to fucking Tucson or wherever we're going. Pull, pull up, pull a Jim Cornette. I'm not getting that goddamn death tube. Just fucking you know, get us go 95. Let's get on over there. <laughs> uh, UConn remains in limbo, waiting its earliest flight, but barring a stunner, it's not getting out until well after midnight. We'll have to stop to refuel. 
if it waits on the plane from Kansas City, per Hurley. The crew can't fly until 10 a.m. Eastern time on Thursday. The fuck is going on here? Uh, yeah, that's that's some shitty travel right there. What a mess. What an absolute mess. Wow. So good luck to UConn. Hopefully they'll get to the uh, – they'll make it to the tournament. Uh, and then, you know, maybe that's the one thing that can keep them from uh, – winning it so all right good stuff there jackpot um we'll be back at it on uh sunday evening appreciate you guys and uh we'll see you later on see you later mm -hmm.